Peace and order to you, and tranquil tidings. Our fourth guild of the Ten is the Senate that rules over all the order of Ravnica, the guild that chooses how every law is written, whose Perun instigated the guild pack that keeps all ten guilds together, Azorius, named after that same Perun, Azor. The Azorius scholars are white for justice, order and peace. This Azorius scholar strives to protect its citizens with the powerful words of law. It strives towards making society better. And then blue, the color of perfection, control and learning. Blue wants to learn infinitely, to improve upon the Azorius laws until it has reached perfection. It wants to tape shut any loophole so that all of society runs in a single file. Together, the Azorius philosophy stands for unhindered improvement, coming together in impossible to understand laws, architecture and other systems. As long as it will take the human a lifetime to understand it, the Azorius want to craft it. And that's just one part of the meaning of the Azorius sigil. The circle in the middle is an intricate web that can not be easily understood. It's also the pattern you see whenever an Azorius mage casts. In this video we will go over the guild structure, then I will show you each guild master, and after each last guild master with a certain creature type that has been explained, I will show you the wonders of the different creatures of the Azorius. Three chapters for the three sides of the clue stone. So, as a true Azorius, let's start at the beginning to look at the future. The beginning being the Azorius sigil. Its three sides represent the Sova, the Jelen and the Lief. The judges, the arbitrators and the law mages, the owls, the deers and the lions, which are meant to keep each other in check, so that no one corner gets too powerful and so that no one side tips over. Everything will be balanced if the Azorius get to choose. The first corner, the Sova, judges or the owls, these are the highest officials in the highest towers. They get to choose what happens to criminals and the guildmaster also fits in this group. In order to fit in with the Sova, you have to be true to your sense of justice. Preferably, you can't do anything but follow your sense of justice. The Arbiters of the Azorius are more low to the ground and also belong to the Sova. They enact laws to keep the streets safe. On their high horses, they almost never stoop too low to the plebs. They aren't like the Lief, who fight to keep order. They're like the Sphinxes, maybe like Lavinia who rarely come down. But when they do, it's because they're sure about their moves. We will get to the guildmasters later, but let's keep things orderly. We'll go by the other two pillars first. The Jelena are the second pillar of the Azorius. These scribes, deer, riders and messengers work day and night. They keep writing new laws, they keep petitioning for new laws and rules and they never give up. Often these people are unaware of the effects of their laws on Ravnica. But often their goal is to make Ravnica feel more safe, even when their laws just as often create strife and chaos. It is at this point important to make one side note. Whenever an Azorius Jelena writes a law, all of the law mages get to use magic in order to force that law to become the truth. If something is forbidden, you could say that the law mages then get the power to use a counterspell on whatever crime they see, for example. Back on track, the effect of the many laws coming from the Jelena is that it will take forever to learn all the rules they write. To the Azorius this is okay, because if everyone would be a Jelena, Everyone would be so busy with writing new laws that no law will ever be broken. In the perfect Azorius world, no judge or lief is needed, because everyone helps to create their perfect world. But the Azorius also know that that is not the case. That's why the lief, the enforcers, the law mages, the hussars and the lions exist. If the Jelena would be more blue aligned, these officers are more white aligned. And like with at any guild, the senate alternates between its colors being more prevalent. Of course, these Lief are different from Boros soldiers, but only because they follow the law and Boros follow their own judgment. In a sense, they're the same, because to the Azorius there are so many laws that you're always in violation of one of them. 
the Lief are so very much white aligned because these soldiers and officers work to limit the freedom of every person so that they fit in their view of society. The good of society matters much more than the inconvenience of a few, says the flavor of martial law. This card also introduces one of the Azorius mechanics, the Tain. It says that you get to force a creature not to attack, block or use its abilities until your own next turn. Sort of keeping it away from the action by restraining its freedom. Exactly like how the Lief like to keep the populace in check. Another part of the Lief are the Hussars, or the cavalry of the Azorius army. As these often ride flying griffins, they get the full Azorius identity. Because flying is a blue and white primary keyword. These Hussars patrol the skies and show the soldiers where to be or where to defend. Sky Hussar also shows us the second mechanic of the Azorius, Forecast. Because the Azorius are not all about this moment, like Red is. Or about the past, like Green and Black. No, the Azorius are all about the future and predicting it means that you can prevent crime and shape the world in your vision. For the Hussars, forecasting means simply knowing where to fight. One more note about the Lief is that they've become a stronger part of the Azorius twice in the stories. Once under Esperia, who knew that Ravnica needed more order while Jace the Living Guild Pact was away, and once under Dovin Ban, who militarized the Azorius in the name of Nicobolas, who needed an army. But even while we will now continue with the guild leaders, we're covering them in chronological order, as a true Azorius cleric should. And while you might think the tome is about Dovin Ban, another Azorius guild leader, it's really about the Perun, Azor I, who authored the most powerful pact in the history of the known multiverse. We actually meet Azor the Lawbringer, not on Ravnica, but on another plane, Ixalan. A plane where he's stuck because he has sacrificed his own planeswalker spark to create the Immortal Sun. An artifact that was meant to trap Nicobolas on a plane. The Dragon God that eventually, ironically, attacked Ravnica. Azor is the Lawbringer because on every plane he's visited he has changed it to have more laws. This is why Azor stops you from playing incense and sorceries. Azor has also brought sphinxes to every plane, teaching them his ways and preparing them against Nicobolas and his influence. Here we see how the Azorius might be controlling, but they can plan and be proactive. Azor's second ability is the same effect as Sphinx's revelation. Not just for fun, but because this is the aspect of the Sphinx. Or so it seemed for a long time until Murders at Karlov came around. You might be able to guess who has this ability now as well. It is Alquist Proft, who is notably not a Sphinx and not even Azorius. This effect seems to hint towards an effect of Azorius' mana, guiding multiple mages towards the same path, even the guiltless ones, where Alquist knows how to crack clues, Azor just knows how to answer any riddle. So there's still a clear winner here. The Perun has multiple riddles and themes, because there seems to be a theme around the number 5. Perhaps it's one for every color, but Azor's allocutors win when they have 5 filibuster counters, and Azor's gateway flips after you have 5 or more different mana costs exiled, and then you gain 5 life. I have not been able to crack this one, so feel free to help and I'll pin your comment. We saw Azor first and last on Ixalan. Azor was exiled to a useless island, but during the Phyrexian invasion, the Flyer fought alongside Queen Elenda from the Dusk Legion, making for a very Esper card. One about control and power and a very magnificent beard. They still have the Sphinx's revelation effect, but Azor has another curious effect on Elenda. Whenever you pay for life, you get Vampire Knights equal to the cards you have drawn, or the insight you've glimmered. Almost as if Azor helps Alenda recruit with his strategy and knowledge. Azor really shows his knowledge of having built the Lief here on Ixalan. Now we'll skip some Augustines, Constantines and Lucians to get to Augustine IV. Many Azorius leaders keep the names of their predecessors. 
and so did Grand Arbiter Augustine IV. This legless advisor was one of the worst, if not the worst, Azorius leaders. Augustine number four used spirits to protect him. This was a curious fact after Ravnica discovered a ghost world above them. But it was discovered by Feather who went to Ghost Town that Augustine knew about the broken part of Ravnica all along. In fact, he even tried to manipulate the Demir Guildmaster to kill the Boros Guildmaster there and semi-succeeded. The only drawback being that Augustine was then killed by Sadek, the Demir Master, in a grand stroke of karma. Sadek also brought back the first Barhelion to crash it into first Prav. That's why the guild house of the Azorius is now called New Prav. Two good things did the Arbiter bring, which was a sense of profound silence and a mastery over spirits. And as this is the last spirit affiliated guildmaster on this list, Let's just go over the spirits of the Azorius. Because the concept of spirits with the Azorius is rather metal. Look at them first. These spirits with big sacks over them, their arms bound to their bodies and their heads bowed low, creating a sense of being defeated. These two protect our August child from internet trolls. But these floaties can be used for anything. The hero Agur's Koss was used to greet any criminal or advocate that passed him, a sort of speaker with a censor. And around the Sension, when Augustine ruled, the spirits were used to govern the guiltless. I do want to point you towards another YouTuber called Silvermere, because while I cover all the guilds, he's covered the guiltless, among which this card fits as well. And that's a really big job done for him. The second guildmaster we'll properly cover is Esperia. Our last Sphinx Guildmaster that used to be a strong advocate for the flying army of the Azorius. She would predict your plans and if she was right she'd get her to grow her army of Sphinxes. But her history isn't about the moments where she fought as a force for justice. No, her real story began when she became a judge under the sofa. No, not under the couch, the judges. Esperia never stopped watching her city from up high. So when she signed an issue for the arrest on all Golgari, she did this on purpose. Frasca, who you might know, was arrested because of this. She was taken away just like any simple rot farmer under the city. Taken in cells with seven inmates in a small chamber. One guard even gouged the eyes of some of the Gorbans out while Frasca with, was with them. Too many Golgari were captured and the prisoners rioted during the dusk and troubles. Many who didn't fight got locked up in even worse places. Now, 50 prisoners were in the same places or worse ones. They were taunted by guards that were afraid or aggressive. And the Azorius guards waited for days for new instructions. So the prisoners starved and Frasca planeswalked for the first time. Esperia later explains to Frasca how she did not regret the decision. The execution was flawed, but the principle was sound. The Golgari were growing too strong and someone had to rebalance Ravnica. Karma worked on Esperia too. She is now a statue adorning the Undercity after she fell down into it. While we learned that Frasca was manipulated into making this trophy, Esperia did have this coming. She could at least have lied a little. And when Frasca came to attack Ravnica as a Phyrexian, she gouged out all of the eyes of so many Azorius guards, because that was what the Azorius guards did to the Gorgons. It had taken Esperia years to join the Azorius and then years to rebuild Prav, built in the shape of a triangle with many round hallways and offices with sub-offices that have sub-offices. Like with the Azorius laws, people get lost in these halls without Azorius or Orcs of help. Esperia liked to prepare for years, but the moment before she was turned into a garden gnome, she had taken the decision to come together with all 10 guilds. And through this assassination, that was payback for an attempt at order, order was turned into chaos. Through the Azorius' hyper focus on order, more and more chaos tries to escape until it has to, and this always happens. Look at the sky scribe. A practice of the Azorius where the most complicated laws are written in the sky for all to see. 
This one is a law that says that all clouds should be organized. And while it is understandable for Sphinx to want to see from the skies, it is funny to ask the clouds to cooperate. But even while Asperia was up high for such a long time, she came down to give us this beautiful fog effect with even better art. Asperia said, Ravnikans need order. If they don't have it, we shall bring it to them. And summarized the Azorius philosophy. And with that short summary, we got to the last Sphinx guild leader. Sphinxes are iconic for the color blue, like angels are for white. They were brought to many places by Azor. So through learning about them, we learn about the Azorius Sphinx of New Prav says that Sphinxes are loyal to the law, not to the Azorius or the Sphinxes. Azor probably created his brethren in order to uphold his view of the law that should be even above his own guilt. And we learn about the Sphinxes that they are an aspect of the blue side of the Azorius that always strives to uphold their vision of the law. This challenge Sphinx shows us that almost no one has spoken with these cat-like flyers. They don't only look like cats by the way, because a Sphinx in Ascension of Reza wanted to keep pawing a translation module of a table like a ball of a face. In Sphinx's insight we see presumably Asperia, but not certainly so, doubting or even knowing the true intentions of Dovin Ban, the new guild leader. As an Azorius, we will of course never go off of something that's uncertain. The fact that this Sphinx kept working with Dovin Ban while knowing that he wanted to destroy Ravnica, maybe even just because there wasn't a law against it, tells you everything about the Sphinxes on Ravnica and how they should be an example for every Azorius cleric. But we were talking about Dovin Ban. As you can see, he is a planeswalker judging from his card. His magic allows him to see any flaws in any system. This can allow him to predict almost exactly when and how something will fail. His magic made him very valued in the Azorius guild. The senate used to always house the best architects. But Dovin improved upon what the guild did and became the guild leader partially because of that improvement. We see in this card the classic Azorius spell circle and the minus one ability that detains the creature in a classically Azorius manner. Dovin walks as if he glides, because even his steps are perfect. Dovin finds the prospect of humor frightening. When the Izzet could request anything from Dovin, they ordered an alligator sandwich and Dovin delivered it within an hour, just to snuff out any laughs. This should perfectly set up his personality. But Dovin started to act in ever more un-Azorius ways. In Grand Arbiter, Dovin uses spy glasses to spy on Ravnica through the Thopters that he taught the Azorius to make. In his minus one, he helps build Thopters and the life gain stands for the progress he brings to the guild. In his plus one and ultimate, he spies on the city for knowledge. Some of the Azorius notice the weird changes Noting that the classical Hussars and Griffins saw way better than any Thopter could with just one eye. And while the Azorius always wanted to prevent crime rather than just defeat it, they used to force investigation on anyone with the potential to commit a crime. But Dovin Ban used the Azorius focus on the future to teach the Azorius to predict crimes before they happened. Azorius mages would read the thoughts of citizens so that they could arrest anyone with a negative thought in their head and Dovin installed portals for the Lief to arrive on the scene even before something went wrong. But why was Dovin Ban, who came from Kaladesh changing this world so much? He could be making masterful inventions. For one, Dovin loves to create perfect systems. So preventing crime and making thopters is something he loves. But then why was he militarizing the guild as well? I already told you, but that's the Azorius way. Looking towards the future and already knowing what will happen. It's all because of Dovin's plan. He wants the Azorius to see that new Prav becomes a safe haven for the beacon that will lure the planeswalkers in. And he wants to know whenever a planeswalker enters Ravnica so that they can preferably be detained beforehand. Before we go and look at the culmination of Dovin's three-step adventure, we should look back for just once. 
Sometimes the Azorius do look at the past as long as it improves the future. A discard teaches us about Ban, because he fights Chandra Nalar, the perfect red planeswalker. And red is the ex exact enemy color of blue and white. After fighting on Kaladesh, Dovin met the maker of the planar bridge, Nicol Bolas, and was infatuated with his intellect and planning skills. Bolas gave Ban the Azorius with the promise that Dovin could shape the plane to his will. Then Nicol Bolas had Frasca kill Asperia and Dovin could make the last move for Guild Leader. And this is where we find the hand of control in front of the beacon protecting it. Instead of forcing the law, Dovin now is a bodyguard for Bolas' plans. His only two jobs being to prevent damage from a permanent, probably from Chandra, and to help create more Thopters to help protect Nicol's artifacts against the Planeswalkers. And Dovin, who is definitely neurodivergent, ticked the Planeswalkers with him off on his fingers. Himself, Domri, Gaia, Ralph, Fresca and Bolas made an even six. Dovin appreciates the fact that he can exactly count all the walkers on his side on his six fingers. A true man of culture. The flavor of this card is that Dovin's plans form and form while he plays out his plan by casting spells on your main phase, because planning and being proactive are part of shaping your future. After the spark war he was fake murdered by Fresca and then real murdered by Lazav, as if it is written in the law that the mere guildmasters have to kill the Azorius guildmasters. Dovin is a Vidalcan, a creature type very popular to the Azorius. These creatures have always been blue aligned because of their high amount of intellect and their low amount of passion and emotion. Reza was one of these Fedalken who never left Prav, but had to in order to get his law accepted. He impressed Dovin Ban with his first really complicated law about identification for citizens and then went to a rebel Izzet factory, accidentally, when he wanted to put his law in the sky. Reza accidentally became friends with a chemister there. Reza then gets arrested by Lief arresters. He wasn't used to the side of the Azorius. He was asked for identification, but had lost his ID. So because of his own law, he was arrested. The chemister saves Reza and while they flee on an elemental escapes. The Azorius guards can't help because the monster isn't in their own area. But Reza solves this by making the factory its own city, so that his Grand Arbiter can call upon the Azorius to protect it. And Reza became engrossed by the idea of making new laws that came from talking with people in the cities. Aside from being curious creatures with seemingly no love but actually a lot of passion for their craft, the Vidalcan can breathe underwater. This is why the blue aligned creatures connect the blue guilds as goblins do with the red color. Because of their swimming, they fit with the Simic. Because of their cunning, they fit with the Namir. And because of their brilliant ideas, they fit with the Izzet. In all guilds, they often take long submerged baths to have thinking sessions without sound to distract them. Picture that. On to the last real guildmaster and the current one. Lavinia's brother wanted to become a Hieromancer under the Jelen, who Lavinia saw as the protector of the people and the law. This is very much the white side of the Azorius philosophy and the side that might rebalance the Azorius for a little while after Novin Ban. Vinny studied under the Lief after her brother had been killed by Rectos Cultis. As a Lief, she fought in the 10th to round up a bunch of low value criminals and did so very efficiently. And yes, I call them Novin Ban. She was the maze runner for the Azorius because she knew about the workings of the maze and she knew Jace. In fact, she arrested the man who was sentenced to protect the maze runners by Esperia. Lavinia had expected Jace to be locked up, but Lavinia seemed to have other plans. Logically, so almost as Azor, the previous Sphinx guildmaster had created the Azorius and Old Brav in the likeness of a maze with a reason. Lavinia joined a council for Jace when he became the Guild Pact. She worked for him day and night, standing beside the living Guild Pact without showing any sign of fatigue. She even had to, too much discipline to roll her eyes at Jace, who's Jace and thus annoying. 
When Jace was being threatened by Fresca, who was on a murder spree, Lavinia warned Jace and then had to guide the Boros so that they wouldn't go on a murder spree in the Undercity. So I think Lavinia at this point had become the perfect guildmaster already. But after Esperia came Dovin Ban, as you know. And Lavinia saw her guild devolve into something new, but worse. Where people used to look up at Griffins and their Hussars and would think that they were safe. Or at least Lavinia thought that. Now they looked up and saw beasts that could eat them at any moment. So, Vinny led a rebel faction against Dovin Ban. Hence the name, Azorius Renegade. Because Lavinia was still very much Azorius aligned. She regretted how she failed to convince Jace to take his responsibilities as the Guild Pact. And she became a force for order. She kept relaying information to Ra's Rack in order to find out who was on the side of Nicobolas, and through her gathering of information, she found all the rot apples. But she was captured too by Tesseret and was brainwashed to kill Hekara for the first time. Her card here stops you from playing cards with mana values higher than the amount of lands you have or spells that are free. And this effect goes against a few Gru cards but interestingly doesn't stop Dovin Ban from calling upon the power of Nicobolas, because the addendum effect lets you put a permanent onto the battlefield without casting it. Funny, because Lavinia's mission failed as well. Partially from her failure she learned how to tackle a huge organization, by sneaking in from a point where they least expect it, mapping the organization and pinpointing their weak spots. Through these Demir-like activities, Lavinia did help the beat the dragon god. And now she is still on the side of the Azorius and Order, while so many of their soldiers are being taken by the Ravnican agency for magicological investigations, she is being rebalancing her guilt. She was also the one to stop speculation from running rampant right after the murders at Karloff Manor. She says to be diligent and see things from two sides before cracking a clue and she helps crack them by adding mana on your opponent's turns. Sort of to say that when your chaotic adversaries want to shout their conspiracies, you debunk them immediately. I think she's doing a grand job still. But like I said, there are people recruiting Azorius clerics, and these people belong to the Ravnican Agency for Magicological Investigations, Rami for short. They're led by the Archon Ezrim, who values truth and clarity after long lists of paperwork. So he disbanded the Azorius to start his own investigations with the goal of showing the truth clearly to all of Ravnica. Instead of carefully investigating, Ezrim says to go right at it. He even sees, seems to use clues to protect himself with hexproof. Archons are often like this. They have such strong values that they become nothing but the concept. In a way, you could say that Ezrim gets more powerful when the truth is found. Archons are heavily white aligned members of the Senate. They always embody a concept and are not often seen without their mounts. On Ravnica they are separate bodies with probably a shared soul. Their faces are always in some ways obscured. They're the counterparts of angels, where they are rather blunt in their values, where angels can be softer in their approach to sway the people's hearts. Archons just make you believe in their ways. I have one more question for you. If Ravnica could gain another Archon, like Ezrim, what should it stand for in order to improve the city according to you? The Azorius would love to know. Thank you for watching.